we have to brew this coffee without water. It can be orange juice, sugar syrup, water down jam, anything. I'm just gonna fuck around and find out. You are watching this and welcome back to another episode of Battle of the Beans, the show where four baristas compete in a series of mystery coffee challenges. I am your host, Caro. And I'm your other host, Ashifa. Let's welcome back our baristas, Addison, Josh, Kimia, and Marissa. How are y'all doing today? Hello and well. What's up? We're doing up? good. This week, we're looking at the cornerstone of the coffee industry, the humble espresso. Now, there are many ways to make espro if you'll allow me. But this week, we thought we'd really push the boundaries of what an espresso can be. So this week, our friends at Flair have sent you all a Flair 58 to brew the best espresso you possibly can. But as always, we have a little twist up our sleeve. Now, espresso is normally brewed with water, but with the Flair 58, we have an opportunity to brew espresso without water and well, we're gonna try. For this challenge, Bruce's, you can use up to three different liquids to brew your coffee. It can be orange juice, sugar syrup, water down jam, anything, you name it. As long as it's not water, it's all wavy gravy. And here to be the judge of your brews is the one and only Lance Hedrick from Onyx Coffee Lab. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hi Lance, Hello. welcome. Hi. Hey Lance. I'm excited. I'm excited for waterless espresso. Have you ever brewed espresso without water before? Well, I There's think that answers that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Great. I've brewed coffee with milk before. I've not done espresso. So what was that like? Not good. You've sent the barista some beans to brew with this week. What are they working with for this week's challenge? Well, it wouldn't be an espresso challenge without featuring the origin known as the birthplace of coffee. Now, what? it? I've sent these lovely folks an Ethiopia Worka. It's a washed coffee that is delicious with tasting notes of bergamot, which everyone likes to make fun of that tasting note, but it's there. Honeysuckle, cocoa, and some white peach that is dazzling. So this should prove to be very interesting for you four baristas. <laughs> it sounds delicious, I have to say. Once you're done with your recipe, you'll send it over to Lance via the magic of the internet and we will meet right back here in a week to find out the results. Any last words of advice for our baristas before they embark on this challenge, Lance? Well, I have no allergies. I never said that and now you know, but <laughs> everyone has some sort of gag reflex. And if I gag, I pray for your souls. <laughs> <laughs> Them oh spiting words. Oh, no. All right, everyone, it's time to get those taste buds tingling because it is challenge time. For this challenge, we have to brew this coffee um, with the Flare 58 without water. So we've got to create some kind of mixture from various ingredients that will not only extract the espresso properly, but also will taste nice. Just gonna fuck around and find out. First things first, uh, we are going to pull a shot of this coffee with just water, uh, just so we can set a baseline and decide where to move from there. Shooting to get a little bit of a pre-infusion here. You can't do a pre-infusion on every kind of espresso machine, but you can on the flare. Oh, I'm not mad at that at all. It's floral, it's like a little bit citrusy, um, it has that like tea flavor. I'm tasting an espresso that's really balanced. My three liquids are cascara, chamomile tea, and milkies. It's a Korean style soft drink. It is based off of the probiotic like yogurt, like the little yogurt drinks that has a nice brightness to it and like nice acidity, like pleasant acidity. So my first thing is gonna be 75%, kind of like a mix between the cascara and the chamomile kind of to have a nice balance. He's gonna try it. Honestly, I might need a little bit more milkies. Still dark-ish. 
color, which is fine. I can't tell which one I like better. We'll try one more ratio and we'll see. I started thinking about mostika keitto, which for those who aren't Finnish, uh, mostika keitto literally just translates to blueberry soup, but it's actually a drink. It's basically like a blueberry smoothie. Tried a bunch of things. Guava did not work, way too thick. This is not extracting. Every soda I tried was like really, really sweet. Oh God. I have recreated this drink called the London Fog. It's essentially got an Earl Grey tea base. I know, very British of me. Um, it's got steamed milk to give it texture. It's got vanilla to give it that beautiful sweetness. I'm gonna call this the London Smog. What I've been doing recently with the London Fog itself is essentially creating an Earl Grey tea syrup. And go. And stop. Mm. No, no, definitely not. That is, that's too sweet. Let's do this. It smells really good though. This is so fucking hard to push. I think I'm gonna call it and say that blueberries are probably not the best option. I mean, this didn't even, this is still a dry espresso. Now, I will say I am a little bit disappointed the blueberries did not work out because I was really, really excited to call it my Brewberry Espresso. Shifting gears a little bit, I have a mint tea that I brewed up and I'm gonna try that and see what happens. It smells like something's burning. This shower is abysmal. Uh, 46 seconds, 46 grams. So I'm just gonna do a lot more cascara. This one tastes nice. Tastes more apple-y, I guess. That one's too watery. I think this one's most interesting, um, and we're gonna try it. The more milkies is a winner. The final thing that I was thinking was the more practical option out of all of them. Espresso tonic. So I'm just gonna warm up tonic and see what happens. So I think that the route that I'm going is chamomile tea. It's a little bit more temperature resilient than other teas and I'm hoping that it will complement the like delicate floral notes in this washed Ethiopia. So what I'm going to do is do the same recipe but instead of adding vanilla I'm going to add cinnamon and I'm hoping that that reduces the sweetness I mean, what is the worst that could happen, literally? One, two, three, let's go. Cool, we're trying to hover around six to seven uh, bars of pressure. It's stopping, it's stopping, don't stop. We could be here for a while. We're at 21 grams and it's taken over a minute. 45 seconds. Lift. And I like pulling it for 30 seconds. Um, it's given me pretty consistent results. Beautiful. Stop. That is one fully saturated puck of coffee. Okay, we've got our shot and we're gonna see how it goes. That is not the worst thing I've ever tasted. And I was expecting it to be very much the worst thing I've ever tasted. Mm. It could be a lot worse. This is by far the best thing I've tried. Um, like some of the delicate chamomile notes still come through, um, but it's still very like forward of the, the flavor notes that I discovered when I pulled a shot of this coffee straight up. But this is really good. Like this is a really nice balance between the flavors of the espresso and the flavors of the tonic. Because tonic also does bring in a lot of those really like fruity, citrusy, kind of acidic notes. It is very sweet, but compared to the last one we did with the vanilla, it is, it's quite pleasant, you know? I think that this is, it's gonna be it for me. I'm pretty pleased with it. Welcome back everyone. How did we all go with this week's challenge? Uh, good question. Uh, well, next one. 
Ah, uh, it was fun. <laughs> she says nervously. And now the moment of truth. Will Kimmy and Addison's minimalist approach pay off? Or will Marissa and Josh's maximalist approach bring it home? Lance, what are you judging the baristas on today? Creativity and concept as one umbrella term or point section. Uh, the texture, I want that, I want that nice texture, okay? I want that tactile experience on point. We're looking at the balance of the drink. So how do the flavors play off one another? And of course, just the overall flavor. All right, lads, let's get tasting. First up is Addison. These little cup is up, and I'm gonna take a little uh, bottoms up here. Let's see. Got it. It's got a pretty nice texture. It's kind of like a thin espresso. Um, it's got a nice kind of like weirdly herbal mint kind of finish to it. Uh, I see some of that work of characteristics come through. There's a slight citric, almost like stone fruity type of thing coming through. The fact that chamomile tea was used to brew this is almost, could almost be overlooked. Uh, I, I would, if I was served this, I could see someone telling me it was some weirdly processed coffee. So really interesting, really interesting there. I'm not ready for this. You said you're not ready, but I'm about to drink this smog all to pieces. I wonder if I can even tunnel it with how thick and goofy it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let me tell you, that is Willy Wonka. That is some sweet <laughs> stuff. You, that is yes. granular. That's what I was going all for. All right. I am glad you last minute threw the cinnamon in because it kind of helps, you know, offset the sweetness a little, but uh, probably could have put like a cup of cinnamon in there, let's be real. Woo, that's sweet. I don't want to titillate you any further. I'm just going to get right to it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, tastes like I made an espresso tonic. I let it melt and get room temperature. And then I uh, allowed some of the water to evaporate out of it to increase the thickness. And then I emulsified some oils to make it have a little crema. Can you say that in English? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing Josh's was before this because this one would, I think, would be sweeter had I not had a film of sugar on my tongue. I, I will say it overshadows, I think, some of the properties of the espresso. But, uh, oh, I mean, it's not, none of these have been like, which is what I was expecting to happen. So Marissa's brew is here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right, this has nice texture. Shockingly, I'm able to get some of the uh, some of the components of the espresso through, which uh, I say shockingly because I added so much stuff to this. There was cascara, there was uh, chamomile, and there was milkies, which is like a soda that's milk and yogurt flavor. I didn't know that existed. I'm drinking three cans of it because it's delicious. I'm getting a nice malic acidity actually from it, similar to like tamarind but uh, it's complementing well with that kind of like baked peaches flavor of that work. Uh, um, yeah, very nice, very nice, very, uh, very nice. All right, Lance, give us the tea, as the youth say, or coffee in this case. Who is taking out the top spot this week? We need the dramatic buildups. It's like, the winner is Marissa. I thought it was a very creative, uh, arguably the most creative out of the four, um, but it worked really well together. The ratio I thought was really nice and it still allowed the terroir to shine through. I was still able to pick up some of my favorite notes from the work of which is uh, my favorite offering so far this year for Monix. So I was really glad to see that it wasn't being muddled out. Um, and I think probably uh, a, hel a helping, you know, part of that was the use of cascara in it, which allowed some of that um, kind of coffee flavoring to come through. But uh, I thought the texture was great. The balance was incredible. I gave this one quite a high score uh, out of the 40 possible points. I gave 32, um, with the highest scores being in the creativity and in the balance of, this, the, of, the, of the coffee itself. So congratulations. You all rock it. Marissa <laughs> sealed the deal. The second highest score was Josh. Gave Josh an aid in creativity. No, it wasn't. A's. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> it a, was. Uh, Are you serious? Yes, Josh. Come yeah. on. Yes. I love it. Right um, on. Third, I had Addison, and fourth, I had Kimia. Um, the biggest issues with Kimmy and Addison is I didn't see much creativity or uh, like concept with them. It was just, you know, Ken Miller or the, or the, the tree. So it really came down to taste on y'all's. Addison's tasted really, really good. I gave a nine on balance and an eight. That was the highest. That and Marissa's were the highest balance scores. Congratulations, Marissa. And thank you so much as well to the rest of the Bristles for playing along this week. I hope you have had as much fun as we've all had watching you slog through that. Uh, and thank you so much, of course, to the wonderful Lance Hedrick for putting limb and taste buds on the line for this week's challenge. We salute you. Where can people go to see more of you? If you want to see more of my uh, craziness, yeah, just my name on a lot of the socials. So Lance Hedrick, you can do it on YouTube, you can do it on Instagram. I have, technically have a Facebook, but I don't really do much on it. But yeah, Lance and then Hedrick, no end. Well guys, at home now, if you want to win yourself a bag of Onyx coffee, leave a comment below and let us know which drink you'd like to try the most. We will pick a winner at random and we will see you all right back here for another episode in just two weeks time. Make sure you have your post notifications turned on so that you can be the first to know when a new episode drops. Happy brewing, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. See you Bye. later. Bye. Thanks again for tuning into another episode of Bachelor of the Beans. We have some amazing things planned for this season, so make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for when new episodes drop. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram where you can see all the behind the scenes action and goss from this season's show. We'll see you next time. Bye.